The hype surrounding the 2018 Columbia Fireworks War had attracted the attention of the media and the world with the promise of an all-out free-for-all between combatants armed to the teeth with fireworks, and it did not disappoint. Stay in the field, bro. Stay in the field. Give me the field. And cleanup efforts for last night's so-called fireworks wars are slowly moving. Over 100 people participated on Demerit Drive in Boone County last night. Despite all the excitement, in the aftermath of the battle, war organizer Armando Harris did what he did after every war. He led a team of firework warriors to clean up the mess they had made the night before. After a long night of battle with fireworks, it left a neighborhood quite messy in Boone County. But as of this afternoon, that's no longer a problem. Today, you could find participants from last night's fireworks war cleaning up the neighborhood on Demerit Drive. The aftermath of the war caused quite the mess, but like every year, participants come back the next morning to clean up. What's up, bro? What up, what up, what up? You know, the, the, the part everybody hates to do right here, it's the hardest part. The war, the easy part. It's the hard part right here. Whoever participated, they had to clean up. And then if they didn't come, he was going to knock on everybody's doors, making their kids come out. Whoever participated, they had to clean up. That He was really big on that. The opposing team's captain, CJ Stock, brought out a team from the east side to assist in the cleanup. But as usual, the number of people cleaning up was dwarfed by the number of people who had actually participated. We had 100 plus people last night, Warren. We got four people cleaning up so far. Just how it is, man. I mean, we got more people coming, slowly but surely, but we are know the cleanup is always the part where it's a few people and not a lot of people. But it is what it is. We're getting it done. Right. Well, and, and still proving the media wrong. They just, they just knew they wouldn't come out back and clean up the neighborhood. Right. Although, the people in this neighborhood was warm before we got here and warm after we still left. Oh, yeah. Well, we still going to get it together. For the motherfuckers that don't want to do it, or ain't got no participation in it, don't come out here and say you're going to do something. There's a lot of more motherfuckers coming to clean up, man. I don't know why everybody ain't participating. We ain't gonna worry about it, though. We're gonna knock it up. I already knew they was gonna be like that, dude. Oh, yeah, I yeah. know. That little nigga, I already knew it. That's why I came out here, even if I wasn't shooting them. So, what side was y'all on? The east. The east side. So, y'all came out here with CJ to clean up and shit? Yeah, you know, I heard with Monday Men and them too. I saw hey, that This is our neighborhood, so we gotta keep it clean for real. And so you the only one that came to clean up? Nobody? Me, CJ. Hell, he didn't even wore And my Darius. That was it? Out of yep. all? I, 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 I'm, I'm seeing now. I clean up every year, right? It'd yeah, be like, like It'd be like 100 status. niggas motherfucking worn. But it'd always be like 20 niggas tops cleaning up. See, that's messed up. Y'all can't want to do stuff if y'all not going to want to clean exactly. up. And... Exactly. Members of the neighborhood showed their appreciation for the cleanup efforts by providing refreshments to the firework warriors who took the initiative to clean up after themselves. Appreciate it. Because I know you've been down there. Thank you. 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 Right, no, I'm good, thank you. Hey. I don't drink soda, thanks though. Where you told that? Uh, cleaning out here. This nice lady gave us one. We out here cleaning the community. So the community, you, community appreciate you coming back out of here and cleaning oh, up. Oh yeah, no doubt, hands down. Community appreciation. Couldn't pick the shit up though. The cleanup gave both sides an opportunity to reminisce on the previous night's exploits and the politics surrounding the war. The main thing is, I know we had fun and shit, we kicked it, but my main focus was making sure none of these niggas had guns to shoot at each other, nothing dumb like that to prove these people right. Like, that's the main thing. The police tripping, taking niggas fireworks, and niggas out here busting guns. You lucky niggas ain't busting guns at each other. They hate to see niggas connect and be cool. They want niggas to be into it. They didn't never want this to happen. They wanted somebody to get shot so they can arrest me and him and take us to jail for some gang violence or some bogus. But it didn't happen. Ah! But nigga, everybody got their nigga out. Niggas slapping hands and everything. They've been into it, nigga, all summer long. Now everybody cool now. We kind of like with Matt's in the interview, man. We got something we can call our own. That war shit is ours. Of course, Kansas City got their worries and St. Louis got the shit that they, they call their own. Nigga, that war shit is Columbia all day. You been doing it? Yeah, been doing it. 
I don't give no fuck this. I don't give a fuck who comes on. We uh, we do like this. No, nigga, you ain't been doing it like this though. See, and they need it. They need it. They need to showcase the part where the police is supposed to be like. You supposed to make. You supposed to be like heroes to the kids. You pulling up the kids that ain't shooting their fireworks just because they open. Hey. Taking their fireworks. That's we got this one right here. On a documentary. Yeah, because man, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what. Me and mine would have went to the city. I would have went and got me a lawyer. Y'all take my kids' fireworks. Man, play. If he's not that's like shooting. like four or five hundred dollars they taking. Yeah. Nigga, I remember I just talked to your daddy. Look, that nigga called me. He told me to call me. He called me at 927. Nigga, I said, congratulations, motherfucker. I said, nigga, I came out the city. He said, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, uh, he said, it's about to say congratulations. We made this work easier than this morning. Yeah, yeah look, <laughs> man, he, he called me on the down the fourth. And nigga said, we still doing the county, right? I said, yeah, he's gone. Oh, I don't, I don't need no shit. I don't even need no slick shit, nigga. I said, I got you, Glenn, man. I got you. That's what fucked him up, because they was waiting for you to do that shit in town. They oh, yeah. wanted to get you. Bad than a motherfucker. Bad. Plus, yeah. man, I, 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 I wouldn't worry about them catching me. I'm worried about all the little kids and shit. One of the 16s, who they gonna catch? Oh, find out, find out. Oh. Why I had to tell a few moms, they like, my kids, they ain't getting no fire. I'm like, bro, so they gonna do it after nine. Yeah. And all the kids do is dark. Your kids exactly. shouldn't be in the midnight yeah. in the field, no way. Man, I'm all about respect, dog. I'm big on respect. And I'm, I'm respecting my elders, respecting motherfuckers my age, younger me, everything. Like, I, I still remember, I said, man, I don't want y'all getting no, you got four kids trying to work. That's $2,000 that you don't have to motherfucking pay. I said, we gotta go out here. I was like, if you don't wanna work out here, cool, but we gotta go out here. I'm trying to help y'all ass. Bro. You got your fireworks too, bro. Uh, are, Tell me about that. Uh, just left the stand with the kids, you know what I'm saying? Ready to shoot the kids was in the back seat. Saw him through the window, I guess. Pulled, my, pulled me over and took my shit, man. Uh, in front of the kids. And even tried to tell me. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go through it and see what you can keep on. You know, damn well he wasn't gonna shoot. Look for the sparkles, huh? Yeah, man, that's it, man. I wasn't even warned. I wasn't even warned, man. I'm out here helping. The war was great, man. Besides dodging shit and get my almost get my ass blew off this year, but it was hella great. So he said on the news you one of the founding fathers, bro. That's bullshit. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't take part in that shit no more. I got you, man. What you think about it though? I don't think there's nothing wrong with it personally. I mean, yeah. it's a good way for people to come together, get along, and have a good time without any violence. So I don't know why the city just just don't turn a blind eye and let the kids be kids and have fun. They clean up behind each other. Nobody get hurt, so I don't see what the problem is. I think it's more of a money thing than anything, really. Good way to get some extra money. $500 tickets for fireworks. You don't even got to shoot them. It's just possession. That's bullshit. The cleanup also gave everybody a chance to speak to the media and present their side of things in the face of what would ultimately turn to a push by certain parties to shine a negative light on the war and its participants. I spoke to organizer Amante Harris, who says the outcome of the war promotes something positive. Over the years, Columbia has lacked community support and, and just community events, period. And uh, this right here brings the community together. And for the next day, as you can see, it brings the community together, the kids versus the next generation together to clean up the neighborhood, which is something positive. I don't think there was any robberies yesterday. I don't think there were any shootings. I don't think there were any stabbings, kidnappings, or any of that yesterday. Because people out here enjoying this. Matter of fact, y'all owe us some money. We need to be paid, man. But, you know, CJ Stocking, we reporting live with ABC 17 News, man. <laughs> <laughs> CJ, thanks, man. It was good yeah. talking to you. Appreciate it, man. Really, though. They need to get that, man. They'd rather take the fireworks and stop us from having fun with regards to people shooting at each other and killing each other. Like, what sense is that? Don't make no sense. Amanta's leadership in conducting a mostly controlled war drew praise from some. CPD Sergeant Mike Hester tweeted, shout out to the firework warriors who took it where it was legal and then shut it down when it went a little crazy. But everybody wasn't happy with the war. Leslie Ann White's 13-year-old sister was caught in the fray despite being uninvolved in the war. When she tried to call for an ambulance, the response she got from emergency personnel infuriated her. Deputies and other first responders refused to come into the quote, war zone, telling Wyatt she needed to transport her sister out if she wanted medical attention. KMIZ reporting confirmed deputies declined to enter the neighborhood and outright refused to give an explanation to the news team. We had heard reports that somebody was hurt, but we have not seen an ambulance yet. Don't know what's going on there. We've been looking around. 
Boone County Sheriff Dwayne Carey piggybacked off her concerns, claiming responding deputies had been hit with fireworks and told reporters this would be the last fireworks war Columbia, Missouri would ever see. The sheriff, however, never publicly addressed why his deputies refused to come in and aid a citizen in need. My name is Eric Lee. I was working as a firefighter for Boone County Fire Protection District on July 4, 2018. I was stationed at uh, Station 1, which is the Lake of the Woods station. What did it look like? What did it sound like? It was loud. It was very lit up. It sounded like a real war out there. I guess there was a, a lady who uh, called 911 for uh, her sister being injured. Uh, and they said uh, we didn't, we wouldn't respond in. Uh, so the case was, uh, of course, always we got to make sure that the scene is safe, uh, the, the environment is safe for us to come in and do our necessary jobs. Um, at that time, it was not safe for us to roll in, uh, for us to be able to roll in safely and perform our jobs uh, the correct and the safe way. Um, so a couple of our fire lieutenants and our captains, um, they hopped in a patrol car. Uh, sheriff patrol car they proceeded through there uh, by the time they got there i guess the uh, victim or the patient uh, had already transported their self uh, to the hospital also another one of the questions was about the tree fire that caught fire so the initial dispatch came out as a residential structure fire or something similar to that so we were you know in structure fire mode so we loaded up uh we proceeded uh, sheriffs proceeded with us, of course, just, you know, for our safety, uh, we get there, we notice that it's just a tree on fire. We get out. I was actually the hoseman, uh, on the hose at the time. Uh, so we're, I'm putting out the fire. I got a couple people with me. They're surrounding me, you know, helping me doing the necessary jobs of, that we need to do to complete, uh, to complete this task. Um, at that time we're in there probably about five, six minutes, uh, a cherry bomb goes off. Uh, very loud boom you know right there our captains at that point was like nope we're out of here They're like drop everything we're out of here uh so at that point we uh we just hopped in the truck we pulled off uh, a couple of young guys uh who was actually participating in the war had actually uh had actually drained out the roll uh the holes rolled it up actually brought it to me uh, I was able to take it over to the fire station, uh, load it up like it was uh, supposed to be. Uh, also, another one of my fellow firefighters had lost his glasses during the whole war. Uh, so uh, the same uh, young gentleman who brought me the hose actually went back, searched and found my fellow firefighters glasses, returned them to me. I was able to return them to there. Leslie Ann wasn't happy that her sister's situation had been used as a public relations ploy by a sheriff's department who wouldn't even come and tend to her sister. After Amana shut the war down, most of the people who were participating left the area and headed home. At this point, there were no deputies in the neighborhood. Um, a lot of people are setting off fireworks though in this area because it is in the county, so fireworks are legal. I haven't seen one law enforcement officer. Not one. Okay. Like I said, I have not seen one law enforcement officer come down this road at all, unless they're in unmarked cars. I haven't seen one come out here. No Boone County. No Columbia police, um, nothing, absolutely nothing at all. All right, we've got a Boone County Sheriff. They're heading that way. Oh, they're going the other way. Footage from CJ's GoPro shows first responders entering the neighborhood only after most of the participants were leaving. Keep going straight. Oh, oh. Hell of a war, man. Slow down, though, bro. Amanta and others believe that people in the neighborhood, unconnected to the war, may have been the ones responsible for allegedly shooting at deputies who came in after things had died down. He was pissed off because it made it look like that he was having them shoot th shoot at them. And I don't even believe if he was still on the scene when that occurred. We wasn't shooting black cats and popping bottle rockets. That's they <laughs> shit. <laughs> My niggas already gone. All right. All yeah. my niggas gone. So yeah. nigga, this is people who just live here. And yeah, they still shooting but shit. But once we leave, nigga, they can't shoot no more fucking body. But nigga, tell your niggas go home. My yeah, niggas already gone. Yeah. They still yeah. shooting at us. No, my niggas is gone, bro. They yeah. been gone for about 10 minutes now. That's people who live out here, so bro. That's people who live out here. 
I'm looking hey, for my nigga. Get in your car and go. Yeah. We're That's why, nigga, you see me? Anybody right here? Where's Matt at? I need to go. Matt's still recording. Uh, yeah, I'm here. But after his initial claim, Sheriff Kerry never provided any follow-up or evidence regarding the alleged injuries, leading some to question if the claims had been exaggerated or were outright false. Citizens possess clothing. Whatever the case, Sheriff Kerry blamed reporters for hyping up the war and increasing its popularity. And coincidentally, the tone of the news coverage started shifting to something more solemn and serious in nature. Many people even started noticing what they felt was a negative approach the station was taking to covering the aftermath of the war. Those cleanup efforts are slow moving. If you take a look around at the ground, you can see there is still fireworks debris on the streets and in people's yards and even in their driveways. I've actually seen some neighbors out trying to sweep and clean up. And one of those women, she even told me that she was hit by one of those fireworks last night when she was sitting inside of her home. And she even had a burn mark on her arm to prove it. Even with all the media pressure, which we're going to have probably another week and a half of media pressure. But you know what they say though, all publicity is good publicity, whether it's bad or not. We try to put Columbia on the map. Now we will continue to follow this story later at 5 and 6. We will tell you what more neighbors are telling us about last night's fireworks war and why one woman tells me this was one of the worst she has ever seen. Reporting live in Boone County, Jasmine Ramirez, ABC 17 News. The approach was irritating to those close to the war because well known to the participants, but not the general public. Two KMIZ reporters had driven a car full of Northside guerrillas to the battle zone in exchange for confirmation of the war's location. They got kids to tell them where the war was, and then they gave them a ride. So it's like the, cop, the pot calling the kettle black, like you're, you know, speaking nextly about this war. KMIZ would like to address and take full responsibility for the conduct taken by two of our newsroom employees. The ABC 17 News crew was assigned to cover Columbia's so-called fireworks war Wednesday night when they encountered three people intending to take part in the annual event. Our crew agreed to drive them in exchange for confirmation that Demerit Drive was the location of this year's event. The decision was wrong and failed to live up to the ethical standards KMIZ has set for its journalists. We would like to apologize to the Demerit Drive neighbors, Boone County Sheriff's Department, the Columbia Police Department, and the three young men that were allowed in our vehicle. Our job as journalists is to objectively cover the news, not become participants in the coverage. Both employees have been suspended pending an internal investigation by KMIZ management. But you're participating in it because you're bringing kids to participate in the war. The people, like they, they then the lady, I guess she got in trouble for taking people to the war. She was just trying to help us out. She was trying to help us get more people there. She stopped at the gas station with us and all that. She went, she stopped there waiting for the kids to, to get their lighters, to got back in the car. They went to Dermier and she got out, started recording again. The move which violated traditionally held standards of journalistic ethics, resulted in a brief suspension for the reporters and became a topic of discussion within the local journalism community. If they, they didn't know where it was, they could have, you know, basically said, hey, you know, just, you know, tell us where it is. No, we can't take you. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that, that's, that's what they should have done. But, you know, it, when you start looking at it, you go like, okay, uh, you're headed in the same direction as we are. Hop on in. We're going to go. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. Hold on a second. There, there are problems there. What happens if somebody gets hurt? What happens? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so many things that go in your head, yeah. but you're trying to get the story. Right. And trying to get the story in the heat of the moment with the deadline, you know, you, you sort of think, you're sort of thinking, but this is the easiest way to do it. Massive news coverage, suspended reporters, first responders hesitant to enter a quote-unquote active war zone, and a 13-year-old with firework-related injuries all seem to cast a glaring light on the now infamous Columbia fireworks war. But the roller coaster of events that surrounded one community's annual tradition was about to culminate in something no one could have seen coming a fight between dueling legislative proposals, one to outlaw the war once and for all, and the other to officially sanction the war as a public event and have it hosted at the county fairgrounds. DJ. Huh? Oh. What are you? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Attempting to play off the negative press the war had received, 
Boone County Sheriff Dwayne Carey and County Commissioner Dan Atwell called a meeting geared towards shopping increased legislation to outlaw the fireworks war. I think uh, the County Commissioner Dan Atwell set that up and invited uh, various people to a meeting at the County Commission headquarters. Um, I think it was after the 4th of July last year and uh, they were discussing ways that uh, maybe possible legislation that would allow them to um, um, you know, control that situation with the fireworks war a little better. I guess there was uh, what they felt was there, there were some loopholes um, that they wanted to fix. We need to do this because uh, of the misuse of fireworks that's illustrated in the videos that we showed and that are available on the internet. The, the sheriff department uh, felt that um, you know it was putting their uh, people, the, not only just the, the deputies, in, in in a bad way, the, the police department as well, and then also the, the firefighters. Um, so they were looking at it from that angle. They didn't want to get their people hurt, and they were also looking at it from a public safety issue of getting people that weren't involved in the uh, so-called fireworks war. Um, you know, maybe just some residents in the area getting getting hurt that way. But the main problem is that they had a, they had a emergency call and they had trouble getting in there to, to get these uh, individuals that were hurt. No one really actually agreed to to do anything, but we were going to look into it. Despite the numerous people who received personal invites, Amanta Harris hadn't been invited. A move that drew the ire of many. So they had the meeting. They were going to talk about the fireworks war. Um, I was interested to see what happened because I didn't think that they would actually want to sit down and talk. Uh, the newspaper came out the next day and it turned out that the commissioners were there, the sheriff, a couple fireworks vendors, uh, and the folks running the fireworks board were not invited. So you know, I was disappointed. You can't really have a constructive conversation without having all the parties involved. So for them not to invite them, it didn't make a lot of sense. It didn't seem genuine. The snub was made worse by the fact that Amanta had been scheduled to debate Boone County Commissioner Dan Atwell on Steve Spellman's Mid-Missouri Freedom Forum radio show at the time of the meeting. Yeah, for folks not familiar with the, the fireworks war and what's going on, just maybe a brief summary of that. I mean, brief summary of it, um, it's been going on for 30 plus years. Yeah. Uh, I'm 26, so of course I went around. Well, longer than you've been around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. longer than I've been around. Atwell canceled the day of without an explanation, a move that Amanta felt was purposely meant to exclude the war's organizer from the conversation. But he seemed like he was very open to talking to just about anybody, getting involved, especially government officials. Nobody was hiding. Yeah, it would have been very easy to find folks and just get in contact with them. When State Representative Chuck Basie found out Amanta felt he had been cheated out of having his perspective heard, he reached out and arranged a lunch meeting. I reached out. I think I think I went through David Seaman because he was running for office at the time, if I remember right. David uh, facilitated that meeting, so I, I met with Amanta at. Uh, um, Buckingham's barbecue there in the south side of town. We had lunch together. Very good meeting. We, I told him what was, you know, what was being kicked around, and wanted to get his perspective. I was impressed by Monte. I, you know, I heard his perspective, and, and he he kind of painted a, a little different picture of what what happened than what I had been, uh, you know, the other information I received or read about in the paper. I, I think if if I remember right, I told uh, Monte that I wouldn't. I don't think I'd ever you know, participate in something like that, uh, at least that scale. But uh, as soon as I first heard about the uh, fireworks war, I got on the internet and pulled it up. And i uh, got to be honest, I was, I was entertained by it. I uh, immediately sent the link to my kids and, and uh, we, we had some laughs over it, so. As a response to the proposal to ban the war, David Seaman, who at the time was running against Atwell for a seat as county commissioner, created an alternative proposal one aimed at hosting the event in a safe atmosphere while continuing the tradition that many held dear. Everybody was, was worried about one property damage, safety, all the basic things. Um, so I thought that uh, maybe we get everybody in the room together and talk about it and we can come up with a solution. Maybe on the, on the extreme edge that we can somehow get this sanction where you've got medical personnel, you've got the fire department, you've got the sheriffs out there making sure it's all safe. So nothing's getting burned down, folks aren't getting injured. Honestly, at, at, the, at the bottom level, the proposal was really just to get everyone in a room because when you have Boone County Sheriff saying, next year I'm gonna put all 150 deputies out there. And you've got 300 majority black youths out in the dark, adrenaline pumping, 
letting off small explosives. That's a recipe for disaster. Just trying to avoid all that, but it didn't come to fruition, unfortunately. It got brushed off. Um, I was, I got labeled uh, as immature and reckless for even suggesting that we sit down and talk to folks. But, yeah. yeah. Amanta was fully on board with the proposal to make the war an officially sanctioned event. He had even been making similar plans of his own. He wanted the fairgrounds. That was, that was perfect. Like, he wanted the fairgrounds. Like He had a plan like, we're going to go spread the field a couple days before so the grass wouldn't be dread, wet. Excuse me. Vendors could come in, like people who wanted to sell food, people who wanted to sell water. To participate in the firework war, you had to pay a certain fee. You had to sign waivers. He mentioned like having like EMTs out there or people who were like, you know, registered nurses so they can, you know, perform, um, you know, first aid. Did Amanta seem to want, want to conduct the event in a safe and controlled manner? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that was... Uh... That was pretty much his focus, was being as safe as possible, not get anybody hurt. And uh, yeah, he he said he even uh, afterwards he uh, took efforts to get everything cleaned up. And if I remember right, there were some damage to I don't remember if it was a car or a building, but he he said he paid for it out of his own pocket for repairs, which which I can't say that about a lot of people. After considering the proposal that had been presented to him, Representative Chuck Basie decided further legislation wasn't the answer to the infamous firework wars. My concern was that if we passed legislation um, that was specific to Boone County, it would push it into uh, other areas. And I represent parts of Howard, Cooper, and Randolph. So and my immediate thought was, well, they'll go to Moberly, and then they'll have the issues up there. You know, I didn't want them singling out one specific group of people. No, legislation didn't get passed. Um, fireworks are still uh, legal down in the county and city, or not in the city, but in the county. Um, so you know, July 4th is two weeks away now. But, you know, we've slowly marched to this point and haven't had much done. So we'll see, we'll see what happens come July 5th. Yeah. With both legislative proposals eventually fizzling out, one major question remained. What would the future hold for the infamous Columbia fireworks war? Would the fearless firework warriors continue their tradition or would the stalwart sheriff have his way and shut down the war permanently? The question became ever more complicated when fireworks war organizer Amanta Harris was killed in November of 2018. The Boone County Sheriff's Department who handled the investigation labeled Amanta's death a justifiable homicide. Amanta's family, however, disputed the findings, citing numerous discrepancies in the official investigation as well as Boone County Sheriff Dwayne Carey's documented dislike for Amanta and his annual tradition. Subscribe to this channel and you might just get to see the results of our investigation into the death of Amanta Harris in the very near future. Until then, happy 4th and stay safe out there.